Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Deconversion Stories. And today I'm talking with my good friend, Tobin Templeman, who is in a... Uh, oh, 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 Tobin, you're going to have to turn the volume down on some of this shit there. I know you're probably looking at the comments. Is that what's going on? So that's, that's what I can hear in the background. Yeah, so hit the mute on that sucker. You can still do the comments and all that. But anyways, um, uh, uh, as you guys probably, some of you probably know, I would just did an episode of Atheist Drinking Out Loud. It's kind of our mid-month episode because we weren't able to do it at the end of April, obviously, because I was dealing with my mom being in the ICU and stuff like that. And we're a little bit late today because I got a phone call from my mom's doctors where they have uh, uh, looking for consent because my mom can't talk because she's had a tracheostomy where they put a little tube in your throat. So she can't really talk. So they need to consent from another family member to do the brachio bra brachiostomy or whatever to check her lungs for fluid that doesn't seem to be going away, even though they've got her on a regimen of antibiotics. But things are looking good. So, uh, this has definitely been an improvement. Anyways, um, if you guys are interested at all about Tobin, you can find the links below, including the, uh, Facebook and the, uh, YouTube and the Patreon. If you feel like supporting, uh, Tobin and his, uh, YouTube ventures, which he has a lot of really, really good, uh, uh, guitar licks and shit going on there. So I highly recommend you do so. And Tobin, honestly, I thought I was uh, subscribed already, but, uh, I remedied that today by actually subscribing to your channel. So hopefully we can get you up to upwards of a hundred subs at some point. Um, and uh, well, well, we we can try, <laughs> but basically, awesome. uh, Tobin, what I do here is I talk to people about their journeys away from whatever belief systems or faiths they were once a part of, and I generally ask them to kind of take us back to the beginnings when you were, you know, indoctrinated and whatnot, and how and why you found your way out of that belief system. And then, of course, you know, we'll probably talk a little bit of music and a little bit of other atheistic type stuff too. Not that music's atheist, but you know what I mean. Right <laughs> so, so take it away, my brother. Awesome. Well, um, one, I kind of feel like this is an achievement making it here. <laughs> I've been watching. I've been in the background. You know, I, I know my name is only, you know, really popped up here recently, but um, y'all have inspired me. Um, thank you, Neil, for doing your show. Oh, my um, pleasure. And I, I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, oh, thanks, man. I love L L Liminous. Oh, thanks, dude. Y'all's music. You have a powerful voice. And uh, I, I wish that. someday that I get to uh, hear y'all. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. That would oh, be a treat. It'd be a hell of a commute to come see our jam, uh, see us at our jam space. But there's no real live performances going on right now, as you know, because of fuck you, COVID. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> I'm trying to convince my band members to follow me down to Faithless Form and do a few tunes down there. But uh, you're trying to get everyone um, organized together and at the same time off is going to be a hell of a chore. But uh, we don't even know when Faithless Form is going to be running because I'm pretty sure they're bumping it from June to a, a, a little bit further down. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, I, uh, I guess I should start telling my experience, huh? Indeed. Of course, okay. that's why you're here, my friend. That's why you are here. Well, um, I thought it would be interesting to uh, kind of make a game out of it and see who could guess what religion that I grew up in predominantly. Mm -hmm. And I will give the winner, the person to name it inside the uh, chat, I will make a song for you. You give me the topic and I will run with it. Mm. But, okay. Cool. Cool, cool. So, now, um, I grew up down by the bay uh, in a little town called Seabrook. And um, it's there on the coast of Texas over by Galveston. Um, and we grew up, you know, for the most part, it was a pretty secular town. A lot of my friends and stuff that I grew up with. But um, growing up, I was exposed to many religions. Uh, there was uh, Christian science. There was, um, <laughs> there was uh, the Baptist. I had... Uh, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, those were 
uh, the main ones that were an influence to me at a younger age. Okay. And um, I grew up and like as a kid and they would tell me the stories and I did somewhat believe in the God. I did kind of, I was like, you know, it, it, it just might be, but a lot of the stories gave me questions and stuff like that. Like, um, like God is supposed to be this all loving being and like, and that I should also <laughs> fear him. Right. And the, to weird. fear God, this all loving creature. So that, that kind of stuck in my crawl at, at a young age, um, along with the other stories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, can God really be all loving if in, in, I think it was, uh, I can't remember which book it's from. I think it's old Testament where it's a Psalm actually, pardon me, where he tells the, the people to dash the infants or happy is he who dashes the infants against the rocks. Like that's a loving God. Like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that is despicable. It is, oh, yeah. it is horrendous. Yeah, that is one of the things that was definitely like, no, this, this is not right. This is not adding up. But I, like as a kid, I grew up in a huge, oh, hey, whoa, that was Pasta Mike. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, is that really possible, Mike? Normalizing atheism? Yeah. I do think so. I'm pretty confident that he is running that channel. Yes. Oh, wow. Very cool. Well, if it is, hey, Pasta. <laughs> yeah. That, I, those, guys, I, those guys are awesome. I really enjoy what they do as well. Um. Okay, um, yeah, I was a little kid, yeah, and, you know, things didn't really line up, and it got, like, to, um, there was a moment, I, I was young at this point in time, and I can remember the time, and there was, um, it, there was an argument no one hurt each other or anything like that uh and <laughs> it just so happened to happen at the dinner table oh boy okay like that old cliche don't bring up uh, religion and politics at the dinner table well the family uh didn't adhere to that rule <laughs> and they started <laughs> talking about uh who had the truth who had the true god <laughs> doesn't it say you know one of the first commandment uh, worship no other gods before me because he's the one true god is that right which is an admission that there are other gods in my opinion but you know right anyway yeah and, and that stuck with me uh truth became something that i was like very interested in mm -hmm. and um that had a big effect on me. From that argument, there's family members who most likely will never talk again. There's there's a pretty really? good chance of that. Yeah. Because you're a non-believer now? Well, from that argument about okay. uh, who had the true God. Right, 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 right. And um, it it remained civil. Nobody like really harmed each other, but it just was a divisive thing. It, it, it put a, a wedge in the, some family members. Sure. As it can. And, you know, that happened to me at a very young age. Um, I was sitting there watching cartoons on the couch and then it just started to get louder and louder. And I peeked my head over and, and they're just all, like kind of yelling and stuff. And I was like, whoa. But um, 
Hmm. You know, I skip forward into like junior high and uh, I had this friend and we would walk home often together Mm -hmm. and the religion thing got brought up. And at this point in time, I was like, you know, I, I just I don't really think this whole like Bible thing really makes any sense to me. And she started telling me about. Uh, these other terms agnostic and atheist Mm -hmm. and she told me that an atheist uh, well first it went uh i was like i don't i don't believe in a god i don't think there's a god i don't and then i ended up saying uh something about uh well i'll I'll worship the devil you know i don't know if i'm agnostic or atheist i'll just worship the devil and she was like well you don't believe in the god how are you gonna worship the devil if you don't believe in a god right i was like all right all right and then i was like well and then she she said she told me that atheists you know don't believe in anything and there's like nothing (laughs) uh there's uh how did she put it again how, she said we don't believe in anything guys <laughs> uh there was a different way she put it but she said something to the effect that uh yeah it would be like nihilistic or or whatnot like sure yeah it, being I, agnostic I being agnostic was like the more accurate uh position to hold right and i i kind of uh you know i didn't have google back then <laughs> I I didn't have the any of that kind of stuff. I I kind of took her word for it, and I basically kind of was like, you know, I I think it's possible there could be a god, but there might be possible that there is a biological life form out there that's farting us out, and uh, this is how we got there, and it doesn't even know that we exist. I mean, my head spec. I, I I speculated and imagined all kinds of scenarios. I was like, "Who who knows? Who knows? I don't." <laughs> Farted us out, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, <laughs> but that doesn't um, sound very likely. <laughs> I better drop some hints to say what religion I was from though yeah i think they're trying they're trying to figure it out there was a day actually it happened before that moment with that girl walking home some people knocked on the door and my mom let them in Uh oh and they started talking and stuff like that sounds like jw Yeah, uh, they talked and stuff like that, and then we would go to church often. We started going to church a lot. It was like three days a week, and yeah, it, it's the people who believe that Jesus died on a stake and not a cross. Mm. They they won't allow blood transfusions and other things like that. Um. But yeah, um, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, you were talking about the people that dropped by your house and your mom left. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they believe yeah. that you died on a stake. And I think that's just Jehovah's Witness. Yep. Yep. You got it. And yeah, apparently um, he was a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And my aunt, I I had other family members from other backgrounds. I went to those other churches as well with other family members and stuff like that. Um, but that one was pretty much the one that I grew up in. But yeah, and then I got to the point to where um, I was agnostic and I held on to some beliefs to like uh, I kind of thought that music 
the people who played music and stuff were prophets and that I could listen to music and listen to lyrics and stuff and then, you know, find a universal truth to the life that we have. And um, I kind of had a lot of wooey kind of ideas that Been there too, I, man. I had in my head. Um, yeah, like the Wiccan stuff that that also rose a uh, a curiosity out of me. Wrong kind of steak, you clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, and it wasn't until a lot. It was after I had kids. I was like somewhere in my uh my thirties. Mm -hmm. Internet was starting to come out, and um, there was all this information coming out, and the atheist experience popped up, and I started watching it, but it didn't really click for me then um right. i didn't really understand all the terminology and stuff like that and i was more into um other things I, I was also going to school and stuff like that but um it was about um six years ago i had had at like a three year span where I didn't have much internet. I didn't, I wasn't able to look up stuff as, uh, you know, as I can now. And, um, about six years ago, I got it back to where I could have internet again. And the question came back up in my head because also I have kids and I was, you know, you know, it, trying to educate myself to educate my kids you know i had told i had taught them about all the religions you know i've basically covered the main ones with them but um uh, i found the um uh, <laughs> yeah yeah thanks danish debater thank you so much um I, I had the question I had, I had one started wondering so I was like what was that show I used to watch it was back there and I was like it was something atheist and then I pulled it up and about six years ago that's whenever it triggered I was like I don't know I I, I can't say I know about I can only sit here and imagine and speculate about what is outside of this universe if there's even outside of this universe you know right, right so i got to the point i was like yeah you know all this time i i really am an atheist and now i i like i i'm really quite I, i'm proud of it really i mean y'all have taught me so much i mean i got i, I had a period of time where I was just watching the atheist experience. I didn't have the idea that, oh, there's other people out there doing this. So there's right. a, a good chunk of time. That was all that I was watching. You mean nothing came up in your suggestions like Seth Andrews or, or, or some old Christopher Hitchens videos or anything like that? Yeah, they did start slowly trickling in. And there was a... a Aaron Raw, it, Aaron Raw was like one of the first ones that popped up. And yes, Seth Andrews. Just, and a, then, just a heads up. He hates it when you call him Aaron Raw. It's Aaron Raw. Aaron Raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron Raw. He doesn't hate it, but he's like, it's Aaron. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay. I can, I, I can kind of. Uh, I, you know, I can understand that a little bit because as a kid, I don't think I spoke up very well. Right. And people would be like, hey, what's your name? And I would be like, Toby. And 
they would go, oh, your name is Toby. And they would call me Toby <laughs> for the whole time until I, uh, I eventually it was like, no, my name is Tobin. With, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I, I kind of. Oh, man, I'm going to mess it up now that I'm thinking about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I respect him very much, and he taught me a lot. I mean, all of y'all have that I've um, I dug in, and this is basically it. It it's the majority of what I take in the viewing, all the news that I take in. Pretty much, I mean, I still go to like the weather channel for my weather but <laughs> of course <laughs> but y'all y'all are my community I, I i really like hanging out with y'all <laughs> in the chats and stuff like that and this is uh i don't know just <laughs> I, i'm really happy to to have uh you know join this community i really am well it's room for lots so you're always welcome. Yeah. Though, you know that. Awesome. Kevin Chaos is in the chat. I actually we're looking for somebody to host or to co-host with us for for today's episode of uh, Drinking Out Loud, and we ended up with with Critical Cripple, but um, like Andy managed to wrangle him, and I was asking a whole bunch of people, but uh, and and Kevin was one of them. But by the time I was like, oh yeah, we'll have you on, uh, they'd already wrangled in um, Dave. So. Right on. Yeah, I've been hanging out with Kevin. Um, there, there's people that have been reaching out to me, and we've been, you know, starting to become acquainted. It's awesome to like, I can make friends with people all over the world. Mm -hmm. This is like, it's amazing to me. Like, this is a blast. I really um, enjoy this kind of um, interaction. It. it it totally blows cable TV out of the water. <laughs> this is real reality TV, if you ask me. Yes. Give me the real deal stuff. Like, I really don't watch many movies or anything like that. And it, it, and really, there's a lot right, of, uh, right. like, <laughs> horror movies and stuff like that that I think are Christian propaganda. Like, all these, like, ghosts and stuff like that. This stuff's not <laughs> even, like, scary or anything to me. I know. Like, I know. like. I mean, there is good horror films. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but, sure. It's classics. But, um, I mean, I really wait until there's something really good and people are like, no, nah, you need to see this. And then I'll sit down and watch a movie. Other than that, I'm pretty busy. I'm a, I, I got a lot of responsibilities. Yo, you're a dad. So that's yeah. not surprising. Yeah, I used to really, really enjoy horror movies, um, and I think it stems back to the times when I was actually, you know, into the that sort of like I believed the ghosts were real, and I believed that there was like a a, a good and evil force out there. But uh, and of course, I would watch them and go be like, <gasps> but nowadays it's just like this is fucking horseshit. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's got to be something really good. Like there's some pretty freaky stuff, and I, I'm I'm willing to let I'm willing to remove my critical thinking bandana, so to speak. To watch some of these movies, like I enjoyed The Grudge and um, um, uh, the one with the I can't remember the name of the picture, but it's got the dude that's in the picture, it's in the photograph, and then he becomes real or something like that, like the scary dude that's in everybody's photographs. Anyways, uh, the movies like that kind of have neat little twists to them. Like Saw is good. I like the Saw. Yeah, ones. but that's more of a that's Ooh. more of a mind fuck movie than anything, really. But, yeah, it uh, gets pretty gory. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. 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 Or being like, being from the Jehovah's Witness, my my mom didn't allow me to see a lot of that stuff. I was sheltered from a lot of it. And um I had to get caught up. I had to get caught up. My wife is into all that stuff. So she's brought it all up. And then once my kids got of age, um we started letting them watch that stuff. I, I, all that stuff is uh good fun. It really is. <laughs> Mikey brought up a fun one here, John Wick, which is actually 
we had a power outage the other day and I saw, you know, my, my computer is always plugged in. So I thought I got a full battery. I'm going to watch a movie. I should be able to make it through a movie. And I watched John wick three and I got about halfway through the movie and my battery shot it. It was like, pfft. I'm like, wow, these really don't last long if you're watching movies. But uh, I end up seeing the rest of it. And of course they leave it wide the fuck open for a John wick four at the end. But uh, yeah, but, but I like, I actually, I really like Keanu Reeves. So, um, a lot of people don't, but I, I think he's really cool. And apparently he's one of the nicest fucking Hollywood people that you can meet too. Apparently he's really cool with his fans. And I think, and that's something I admire because I've met multiple famous people and most of them have been really cool, but there are some that are just total dicks. <laughs> it's like, you know, cause they have that, that, that giant head from their fame. So, but apparently he's like totally cool. He's like, he'll, he never says no to folks that want to take a picture. And, you know, of course he's careful about that. He doesn't actually touch people because he doesn't want anything coming back and biting them in the ass sort of thing, but which I get because, um, not that he would be that kind of person anyways, because I highly doubt that, which is why he's respectful. So, yeah. Anyway, totally derailed. <laughs> Let's get back onto, uh, your story. Right on. Um, Well, I, I kind of blew through that that pretty quickly, didn't I? <laughs> I want to I mean, know. What, what's up? Keanu was raised in Canada. Yes, that's true. He was. Oh, so he's got some of them good Canadian stuff. Um, I kind of want to know how this affected your relationships with your family. Like, how did, um, how did your leaving this belief system, whichever, because apparently everyone's still trying to guess which it was. <laughs> But how did it affect your relationship with your family and your friends? Well, um, well, I'll start with my dad. My dad, um, he is, um, he's a non-believer too. And that was one of the things that, uh, caused an issue with, uh, because my dad didn't want to go to church and like um I, i'm not even exactly sure what happened and why my mom eventually ended up stopped going but th- there's something that that happened and she eventually uh no longer could go or stopped going but my dad was a non-believer but it's it's weird because now um since I started, you know, learning about the atheism and the, the, these ideas, um, I, I'll go back and forth my, with my dad. We'll sit there and we can uh, we can argue, but we have a good time. We hang out and we can talk about things, uh, you know, uh, social issues or whatever. It, he's I, I, I love my dad. Shit. I mean, um, Wait, he's been a dad. constant. Shit. <laughs> Shit, I love my dad. Right. No, no, but uh, he, no, nah, he's a good dude. He's, uh, you know, he's always been willing to talk about things and stuff like that. But it's funny because now I like, I see him more now as a deist because he actually thinks that, um, <laughs> like, uh, nature is God or something like that. But oh, so he he does take the deist like some deity fucking made everything and then fucked off and has wants yeah. nothing to do with us kind of thing. Okay. But sometimes I kind of think he just likes to argue to be con you know to be a contrarian to mm-hmm. you know have conversation. I sure. don't know. But uh have you ever asked him what he actually believes? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. He'll come down and visit and uh I, I still I I'll go travel and go see him and my brother. Um nice. And that leads into my brother. My brother is um, com- an apathyist. Like, if I try to bring up religion uh-huh. or any kind of like aspect of it, he just doesn't want anything to do with it. And at one time, I I was like, "Oh, so you're an apathyist?" And he he, got, he bucked up to me. He was like, "What'd you call me? What does that mean?" He like he doesn't get any of the terminology. He's <laughs> he's funny as heck, but um. <laughs> Yeah, 
it, an apatheist is, by the way, guys, is somebody who just doesn't care. You don't care yeah. if there is a God or isn't a God. It's none. They have absolutely nothing to do with it. They just don't give a shit. Yeah. And then I got a sister. And from what I hear, she is. Went back to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, so that's originally where you came from then was Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it was the Jehovah's Witnesses. Wow. Yeah, they're one of the more cultish groups, that's for sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, one thing that that experience did give me that I, I can take away from it was the whole door-to-door -door aspect. Like, I had people slam the door in my face. But, you know, I would, like, five to eight or somewhere in that age mm -hmm. so and then just to turn around and go to the next door and go knock and you know it kind of gave me this sense of um you know well if if somebody else doesn't want to hear it then i can go somewhere else and somebody else somebody might like it you know mm -hmm. i don't know it, it kind of i think it kind of uh goes into a little bit of a salesmanship thing like i don't get i don't let it hurt my feelings when people do that to me i've had it happen to me i, I don't really care if somebody's like i want to hear your shit fuck you <laughs> <laughs> so but uh wish my shit could talk <laughs> <laughs> hey don't flush it i'm not <laughs> yeah um Let's see. And uh, my mom, see me and my mom, my mom was, she's definitely is a believer. And mm -hmm. that was, it wasn't because of religion. Um, it, it got to a point to where I, I have a hard time. If my mom called me today, mm -hmm. I would pick up the phone. No, like well, okay. I, I'm, e I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. There are family members that I know she talks to, right. and they, they, you know, it's a two way road. But I, I got to a point to where I was just like, I, I was trying to, to get my family going, take care of my family, and there were issues that were happening that were like it, it was causing a lot of stress for me a lot of stress so you see this below? question for uh, tobin what age did you leave jw i think it was like 12 ish 11 to 13 i'm pretty sure that was i, I was done going to church because i think about 13 that's whenever i had my first uh hit a weed i got a, i was curious my buddy was like oh look at this <laughs> he had scrounged up some dirt <laughs> it looked like <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah and, and music started like at that age like about 13 music um all the records my parents had this huge collection of records in the record player the big headphones with like metal sticking up out of the top. Yeah. Yeah. Remember those. That's how I really first started experiencing music. I put on the record and I jam out and, uh, I mean, so many of them like captain beyond, uh, black Sabbath. Um, that dude, the name's going to escape me of the drummer, but he stomps it. I, I, fucking love black sabbath rush <laughs> rush uh tom sawyer was the first song i, I chose to that was the first one you heard from rush oh. no that was the first one that i chose to start learning how to read notation for the drums gotcha. was tom sawyer did i ever really make it all the way through i think i was pretty good for the age i started messing with it but um <laughs> But big influence in on me. 
and um and then there was the punk rock scene like once i got into like 13 to 15 we had uh skateboarders and punk rock and rap was blowing up too with like snoop dogg and dr dre so there was all that going on too i've i've always been pretty uh my my musical tastes are are pretty wide like i like a lot of different music but music you know fyi uh bill ward is the drummer of sabbath bill ward Yeah. yeah but music has a lot of um messages in it too that i think also kind of help push me you know out of the religious ideas and things like that like i got caught having uh glenn danzig's uh tape in my desk and it had mother on there and they took that away from me what couldn't have that one yeah i as a kid uh, i was only allowed to have certain even as like a young teenager i was only allowed to have you know certain types of music huh so i was right into danzig for a while i still like some of their stuff for sure well glenn's stuff anyways but he used to be um in the misfits i think it was yeah yeah Uh uh-huh yeah but there is a there is a lot of that that kind of pushed me from being you know not very traditional and uh i i think um that that played a big role in it like i I started looking at traditions differently i think that may be the reason why i don't know i'm i've been married i've known my wife for over 20 plus years and um i think one of the reasons might be is because of like i didn't really i don't like misogyny like it makes me feel really, really uncomfortable. Yep. Whenever I hear guys like, oh yeah, like I, I heard that as a kid, you know, from different places, and it it uh that rubbed me the wrong way as well, because yep. some yep. of those people were they're religious Bible thumping, you know. You better do what God tells you to do, you know. God is no. good. No, no, it's not. No. It's pretty much the opposite of that, <laughs> according to the books. But yeah, no, I get that. I've I've actually given up on people because of their misogynistic ways because it's really uncomfortable, like you said. Yeah, it it does. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. And um, but yeah, um, I, I there's a lot of traditions. I've even tried to uh talk to my family about like we could still have christmas and still have you know holidays with people during christmas but like financially like make it to where we don't really buy all the the presents during christmas we'll wait until right after tax season when we get our tax money and then we can go crazy no one's bought it yet i i tried I, I've tried to talk, but they, they don't want it. They're like, no, we want Christmas and we can have this other holiday that you're talking about if you want. More <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But uh, I thought JWs didn't do Christmas or right. birthdays, right? That's right. That's right. I missed out on a, a lot of those. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. It, and it, it was weird because I, I came from a big family and they would do uh, Christmas Eve. We would Christmas Eve was like we would go to the family's houses. We would go around to the uh, well to the two grandparents' house, to my mom's and my dad's parents' house, and you know it. It was it was it was kind of. Uh, Ever had a birthday? Oh yeah, time? yeah. I I have it. My my family we, they they treat me good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I, I've been making up for it. I had, and awesome. Yeah, but um, when is your birthday? I'm actually in May 11th. I was Ooh, born so in 80. Up. Yeah, 1980. I was. Yeah. What, how old was I in 1980? I think it was already like 90 something. But no, I'm just kidding. Um, 
1980, what was I? Jesus Christ. 13? 13, yeah. Pretty sure. The year I discovered masturbation. Yeehaw! <laughs> which was which was uh, which was fine. And my dad, you know, he said, "Don't worry, kid. It's it's normal, but just not at the dinner table." <laughs> you know, and, and, and see, that's that I've I had. <laughs> I had that kind of like the Jehovah's Witnesses. There, like that's not good. I, I was like uh, told not to do that kind of stuff, and you know, <laughs> I need to wait and all. Yeah, I didn't listen though. <laughs> Apparently, this year your birthday is on a Tuesday. Oh yeah, you know what that means? That on May eleventh, when I do an after party, we should get your ass in here so we can do a little birthday salute to you. Oh right, and do it on the after party. Awesome, I'm totally down for that. That's my producer for. He's all over this shit. He's like, I know what that is. I'm gonna fucking put this out there and. And yeah, and we're gonna get Tobin in here and get him fucking shit faced and and smoke a doobie and 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 have a good birthday night. Awesome! <laughs> Heck yeah! Sound like a fun fun time? Pop into Absolutely. the after party and yeah, we'll have everyone attempt to sing you happy birthday very badly. And <laughs> <laughs> well, the point of it is, everyone's gonna have to sing it like my roommate does this with their family all the time. They call each other on their birthday. A bunch of them get together and they get on the phone and they call and then they sing happy birthday to the family member out of key. Right? The whole point is to make it sound as bad as possible, right? Just for funsies. Right. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I've heard it multiple times. So it's the best way to do it. It's the best way. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Mikey just breathes things into existence. Oh, wow. He's, Mikey is God. <laughs> we found him I, all this time. Now I, I got on your show and now we found God. Yeah, that's it. Oh, Show's man. done, guys. It's all done Jeez. now. Mikey's actually wow. God and for some reason decided to be my producer and just not tell me. <laughs> we'll bring his ass in here in a few minutes to explain himself. Because uh, we are, I mean, we got, what, about 15 minutes to go before, or give or take, uh, to the end of the show. And, of course, we'll do an after party, which uh, cool. we should have a lot of fun. Yeah, I need oh, to see oh. evidence. I need to see evidence of this guy. We, yeah. <laughs> well, he's there, so that's better than the current god. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, we know he exists. Well, or do we? Do we actually know? Uh, oh, God, I'm going into solipsism. Stop it, Neil. That's some fucking <laughs> cop-out bullshit is what solipsism is. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so d did any did any of your family members just kind of give up on you? Because in Jehovah's Witness tradition, a lot of the times when you leave the faith, you get shunned, right? So has yeah. any of that kind of thing happened to you? Okay. And do you kind of wish that you could fix it somehow? Um. Okay. My sister is, is supposedly... <laughs> still she went back to the jehovah's witnesses and yeah if you try to get a hold of her you get bible verses back really you don't, you don't even get to her you don't you don't and she has uh the nephew my my uh kids haven't seen their cousin and a long time more more than long than and they got to to play as kids and stuff like that with each mm -hmm. other and um yeah that that's uh, if i could i fix it if i could fix it if there's some way i could talk yeah yeah absolutely uh, Just... there's there's none of my family that I would be like, no, I can't talk to you anymore. You know, that's all right. See, that's not so bad. I mean, I mean, what you should do is start sending your sister um, videos of the atheist experience. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of the family member like that outside of my immediate family. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a lot of them that just would not be surprised that okay. 
I've ended up being like, claiming to be an atheist. That I don't think it would be a surprise to them at all, really. I think there is some of them that might might take it a little bit hard, but although um, really, I, I've had a lot of talks with a lot of people about God. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about with people, and it seems like. Whenever I've been hanging out with somebody long enough and that topic comes up, it's like we're bonding. We're becoming friends, you know, at that stage. Like, I think when people start opening up about those kind of things in reality, you know, in my everyday life, that it seems to be like one of those topics that other people like to, that people like to tell you what they believe. They really do. and. Um, I'll sit there and listen, but I will ask questions. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Always good to ask questions. One of the funniest memes I've ever seen is you'll see um, like somebody, I guess, uh, graffitied or spray painted on a wall somewhere. Question everything. Underneath it, it says, why? <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> everything. Question everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, well, question everything that seems suspect, or as they yeah. say in uh, in that game that the kids are all playing. Um, what the fuck is it? I can't remember what it's called now. See? I'm old! But uh, yeah, where they say, oh, you're sus, you're sus, which is sus. Oh, Among uh, Us. That's, that's, that's the one. I haven't gotten to play it yet, but it does seem fun. It, it does, yeah. you know, you kind of kind of figure out a puzzle who's the one yeah who's yeah the, who's, who's, the, who's the one killing everybody <laughs> grant wants to do the show again just so mikey's here <laughs> <laughs> hear that mikey everybody loves you buddy hey, why don't you come on in here man i'm sure you got a couple things you might want to uh ask uh to open here forgive the dire hound screaming in the background <laughs> i think someone tried to close their own car door again Interesting. Their own house. Interesting fact: mm. Dire wolves were not actually wolves, though they were a member of the Canis genus or or whatever the fuck they call it. They weren't actually wolves. Well, were they? Their own they, thing? Were, they were their own thing. Yeah, they weren't actually wolves, but uh, and they weren't huge. They were slightly larger than the wolves you're familiar with. But yeah, there's a little interesting thing. Yeah, coins. Hasn't been going nuts today like usual. Oh, it seems yeah. to be doing that now, but of course, yeah. Right at the end. Yes. Well, but zero, uh, did, the wonder pup. zero the wonder pup. So is there anything that you had, um, old man Neil being old? Yes, Grant, I'm old and and thank you, Vonrick. Yes, among us. Yes. Um, is, anything is that you bad. uh oh goddamn stuffed fucking stuffed animal that eats. Fucking most <laughs> annoying thing ever. Um, uh, you forgot adorable. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, it sounds like the way you were. I just what? noticed your name. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you did notice that. Uh, the God. <laughs> All the right. God. The God. The God. I need to put the UH on the end. The God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God. Yeah. Um, so it oh, sounds like sisters. for most of the people like that I've talked to who are like ex uh, JW, like the disfellowship is like the worst part, but it sounds yeah. like yours was kind of like not too bad. You know what I'm saying? Like not the worst thing ever. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I was told, you know, I wasn't going to church and I was like, finally, holy <laughs> man, I don't want to put on this. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you I guys was, did uh, remember my birthday. You told me I don't have to go to church anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the other part was like, did you guys, did your family ever have to like um, disfellowship anybody where like you were told like, oh no, you can't hang out with the Johnson kid anymore. With their oh yeah, there, there was kids in the neighborhood I wasn't allowed to play with and stuff like that. Yep. Wow, really? Yeah. My wife yeah. was included as one of those 
<laughs> well, oh, that see? backfired. <laughs> yeah, they, see, they just made it tempting. That's all they yeah. did. <laughs> I got to meet her now. <laughs> why are they trying to hide her from me? And actually, I talked to her. I was like, why didn't we sign you up, too, to tell your story? Because she's got a good story, too. She sign just, Yeah. I, I mean, it, if y'all want, uh, Kidra would of be. Of course. And she's got a pretty good story. Yes. Of course. She's always, she's welcome to come on and share. Awesome. That means I'll get both of you in the after party for that one. Well, she's welcome to join the after party too if she likes. Awesome. Only if she agrees to come on and do hers. <laughs> gotta, have, gotta put the camera well, no, no. out there. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I'm sure I, she will. <laughs> I talked to her already. She she is down for it. Yeah. Nice. We, we nice watch you and, and she loves y'all. I mean, we've Aww. grown well, fond of her. y'all. For well, sure. Thanks. That's appreciated. Thank you very much. Say Tell all your you friends. Girl. <laughs> He's like, I want to go sleep on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it's rough being a dog. <laughs> do, do every time I come home from work and I'm like, oh, where's my little man? He's not coming to greet me at the door. This motherfucker is passed out in the middle of a queen size bed. And he's as big as like half of one pillow. And he's just upside down. Just like, you know, like sprawled. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, my belly is exposed. You best be rubbing this shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, good, you're home. Just in time for the six o'clock belly rubs. Come on. <laughs> Go get your velvet gloves. <laughs> you know the routine. <laughs> is that what you say? Uh, the furry babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we got three fur babies running around here. Woo! Yep. Until someone tricks me into getting real babies. Tricks you? <laughs> I'm poking holes in the condoms. That's why I, I started <laughs> buying them myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer a papa stopper. It's now a baby baby. <laughs> she was she was a little bit too en- enthusiastic one day about having kids. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Perhaps maybe I will uh, take this uh, responsibility upon myself. Maybe. Really, man, it's it's not that bad. I mean, from like two to four, I think that's those are probably like the roughest points in time. Like when they're real small, they, it, it's you just feed them. There's like some cleaning up to do. I mean, but they're actually they sleep a lot. <laughs> they sleep a lot, and, and they're 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 not too bad, you know. And then they grow up, <laughs> and they can beat you at your video games. And start annihilating you in your card games and stuff like that, and give you a challenge and stuff like that. And then you're like, "Well, I'm gonna go find something else. I guess I'm gonna go pluck my guitar." Can y'all do that? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my kids actually play around and stuff too. I haven't. I I am I am super excited for kids, but only so that I can train the Mikey Fam in 2.0. Once I get I that know. version out there, it's going to be cr- – y'all are screwed. Internet's Uh-oh. going down. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> there will be little clones of me running around. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the one thing we all forgot to think, whether we Mike, should. Mikey, you got to have enough kids so you can have your own band. Yo, yeah. I will totally Joe Jackson this situation. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna beat the shit out of my kids and just tell them that they're ugly for their for their entire lives and that they're talentless, so they become the shining beacon on the hill. But uh, I will definitely. Uh, I'm like, I see you're uh, good at uh, math here, little Johnny. How about some? Uh... Oh, that's awesome. My husband never got pregnant. So I'm blaming him for a lack of kids. <laughs> that's an awesome avatar too, by the way. Yeah, it totally is. I totally read that as a dog. Like, you know, like there was a dog saying it. It's too good. <laughs> All right. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm what's kidding. that? Facebook? Cake's done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> coins oh, here. We'll go coins. Yeah, we haven't had any for a while, so. Yeah, I'm drinking um jarritos. I'm just having a little Mexican soda right now. Nice. Heck yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Tamarind flavor. That right. name yeah. reminds me of Haracha. That that drink, that rice drink, that stuff oh, is Orchada? so good too. Oh, yeah. Orchada is my shit, man. Yeah. 
stuff is so good. It's like it's like a cinnamon dream. It's just it's just the best. I will straight up go to a school bus that's like from 1970s, <laughs> and like it's got a little awning outside of it, and they got oh, some like little picnic truck. benches. And man, they make the most bomb tacos. And yeah, and in and, and the horchata. Yeah, yeah. You guys in your tacos. Man. What's, what's wrong with tacos? No, it's we, great. We, it fits all in the seat. I just, just had them. tacos. That's what I was eating. Yeah, I don't mind tacos. They're not like at the top of my list, but if they're there, I'll eat them. I don't know if y'all got any like Mexicans up in uh up in Canada. Y'all got Mexicans? <laughs> Of course we do. <laughs> There's a couple living across the hall from me. All right, I'm just saying, because I mean, like we're right next to Mexico, especially if you down in the uh, Southwest states. That's like just over the border is what I hear is the best Mexican food. Is wow. just on the American side. Well, um, uh, uh, as a kid uh, growing up, I when I was little, I used to love uh, uh, tacos because you know they were always fun for kids right but as i grew older i kind of grew out of the taco phase i went right into like the burritos like the fucking massive ones you know, <laughs> the one and a half pound fucking burritos those things are so good man like, i never know how to eat that i'm just like just do i look like a hands. weird form ar -ar 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 yeah. it's like Pretty i don't inhale to... it <laughs> i have to like look around the room make sure nobody's staring at me as, as i try to take the first was like oh, what's up it's like wow, he's really good at that. Like I don't know, <laughs> surprisingly depth. You, you become popular, <laughs> and then people miss you, and then bring you back as a god. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Mikey was uh, was was pretty sick last uh, last episode when I had uh, a grand uh, time. So I, I left work after like two and a half hours, just throwing up, and I threw up until about four. And I was oh, like, okay. Man. That's a um, long time to be throwing up, dude. It's it was driving was the worst part. Oh, <laughs> like oh, okay. So you weren't like throwing up straight for two and a half hours. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. But I threw up twice at work and then I was still throwing up when I got home. I think I got bad tacos from uh, Taco Bell. Ooh, well, Sorry, there's your first you. mistake. I I wasn't I was lazy. That's that's well, on me. I like lazy. the crunch wraps. Those are pretty good. A cheesy gordita crunch ain't bad, but that's not what I got. I just got like the party pack because I didn't feel like ordering anything. So I just got like a little bit of everything. I did well, it's just like 12 crunchy tacos. I was like, let's fuck this fucking box. Oh, <laughs> well, there's your problem. Man, I ate like eight tacos in about 38 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> not great if the, the meat's no good because I was like, I feel so bad. <laughs> you know, Taco Bell does have a pretty crappy taco. They do. I mean, the I'll, I'll eat them, trash. but the best worst taco that you can possibly get, at least Jack over the here, you got it. Jack in the Box is the best BCS. worst taco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, they're open till 3 a.m. Uh -huh. and, and when you leave the bar at 2.20, that yep. line is around the fucking block and everybody's eating them fucking disgusting ass tacos. Yeah. Ain't no seasoning in them bitches. They got a slice of American cheese sticking out the top. It's the most Wilted disrespectful lettuce thing. And stuff. Yeah. The most disrespectful thing that's ever happened to a taco. But God, that's not even a taco. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll in the after show. I'll pull up some pictures of some Jack in the Box tacos. They are wretched. That, that reminds me. Um, we can no longer watch Grant's after party because. Oh yeah, that's right. All right because it's been blocked by YouTube. So we are no longer going to be showing other content on the show because I have, I got two strikes on that one video Oh, because the careless whispers song was in the background on something and the clip oh. from BBC uh, or planet earth or whatever with the gorillas crossing the road, they were on that like that. And within 10 minutes after we stopped airing, my video got blocked. Because I, I remember having it up, like I opened it to see what was going on, and then I fell asleep. And then I went to like refresh the page, and it was like, nah, son. Mm -hmm. Nah, you good. <laughs> gonna I'm going to get in there. I'm going to edit that out so that they'll at least air it or, or have it be able to be watched. So, 
But yeah, we are at the hour, Tobin. So I want to, first of all, thank you for joining me today and sharing your story with us. Even though it's, it wasn't as 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 uh, uh, gut wrenching as some of the other Jehovah's Witnesses leaving the faith stories that I've heard, you you have a pretty cool family that stood behind you regardless of all this. So that's pretty cool. And you you let your 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 lady know that whenever she wants to come on, uh, just to get in touch with me, and we'll set it up. Man, she can get through wow. to me on Facebook as well if she likes. So yeah. All right. Awesome. And, and of course. My patrons. I mean, this show wouldn't be what it is without my patrons. You guys definitely helped me pay for some of the bills and stuff like that. So you're mucho apreciado, so they say. <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making shit up off the top of my head, kind of like people who write like the Bible and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> um, so don't forget that Randolph and I, very, very soon, we are still working on the studio. Well, Randolph is actually doing most of it. I've been there for some of the heavy lifting, but... Uh, uh, True North Talk will be coming to you quite soon. So uh, keep an eye on the channel there. You can head over and give us a uh, a sub over there. Uh, I believe the link for it is below. Uh, don't forget all of Tobin's links are below as well. Um, and we just did an episode today. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I wanted to get this one out first because we just did an episode today of... Um, no, not 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 the nonprofits. All right, I'll mention that first. Don't oh, yeah, oh. nonprofits. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we did a mid month one. <laughs> we'll get there. Right. I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm scrambled <laughs> eggs. I tell you, but um, <laughs> we're Andy and Seamus and myself, and we had uh, Dave Crit Critical Cripple with us today. He wasn't drinking. Well, he was drinking what we, what we were dubbing as the vodka free vodka drink that he was drinking. Today. <laughs> Potatoes. Uh, <laughs> normally we go the last Saturday of every month, but because of what had been going on with my mom being in the ICU and stuff like that, uh, we took the end of the, of, of March off. So we are doing, we did a mid month one this time. We're doing one kind of at the end of April, but it's actually going to be May 1st. Cause that's the Saturday after the end of, of, of April. So we're doing May 1st and we're doing one on May 29th as well for the end of May. And uh, we'll have some great guests that'll be joining us. Probably uh, people like U uh, Utah Outcasts X from Utah Outcasts will be in one of those. And uh, other folks, too, that I've been trying to get a hold of. Um, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, guys, um, again, yeah, like I was trying to mention below as well, uh, the nonprofits, uh, myself and Mikey has also been a, a co-host of the show. Uh, so yep. definitely check out uh, the nonprofit's new uh, revamped and relaunched show that airs between Talkie the Nate, the experience on the ACA's uh, program uh, list there. So um, go over there and give them a sub if you haven't already. Uh, there's a lot of fun. I'm in the one you'll see tomorrow. And uh, I won't be recording an episode this coming Wednesday. There'll be a few other folks. But um, I'll be on the one probably after that one. And the one after that, we're, we're taping a few episodes, I think, to have in the can for for times when we need them. So, uh, yep. yeah, it's a lot of fun to do that show, too. You never know when COVID will strike. Exactly. But, all right, guys, uh, thank you, everybody in the chat, for hanging out with us. Uh, always fun to get your comments and questions and stuff like that. You guys kick ass. Thank you for hanging out. We are going to do the after party if you are interested. I've already got a bunch of people that are already interested in coming in here. Yes. Coming, so. Um, if you are interested in jumping in the after party, you can let Mikey or myself know via Twitter or Facebook. And the link to it, as the little banner says, is down below if you just want to hang out in the chat and poke fun at us like lots of people do, which is always fun, too. And like I always say at the end of the interviews, guys, like the late, great Christopher Hitchens once said, it's called faith because it's not knowledge. And we will see you guys next time.